When did you last use cash? The answer, in part, depends on where you live. If you're based in Europe or the US, the chances are it's been a while. But if you're one of the almost 2 billion people in the world without a credit card or bank account, then it's a different story. I headed to the beautiful islands of Antigua and Barbuda to find out how everyday life is affected by a lack of financial access and how Bitcoin SV could be the solution. Studies show that only around half of the population in Latin America and the Caribbean have bank accounts. In most European countries, it's over 90%. Can I pay by card or by cash? By cash. Cash is better because most people don't use the card because you have to have a certain amount of money on your account. Like a maximum of 5,000 for you to get a card. Okay. And it's very difficult. Zoe, a local businesswoman who sells souvenirs to tourists, agreed. Banking is difficult here. So, you know, just doing anything with the bank, going in, um, having cards, the transaction fees, their requirements for you to have a bank account, a lot of that is very time consuming and expensive and people get frustrated. They don't like the system, so they rather just, I don't know, put their money under their mattress or whatever the old school way of saving. Can I get this please? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. While cash might be a good way to pay for a papaya, there are times when it's much easier to use a card. Over a million tourists visited Antigua and Barbuda in 2018, many of them coming straight off cruise ships. These sun seekers want to spend their holiday money as quickly as possible, not by queuing for cash. How do the tourists usually pay for things? They pay with cash or with credit card? Uh, I would say majority credit card. Is that difficult for you to facilitate if they're using different currencies or paying with credit card? So for credit cards, we have to pay 3.5% on all the sales with uh, Visa and MasterCard. So we absorb those costs whenever someone pays by credit card. And specifically in this store, we have everything is pretty much $20 and under. So sometimes it, it hurts a little when you have to pay that. But I mean, it's all a part of doing business, I guess, here in the Caribbean, you just accept it. Antigua and Barbuda is one of many countries that has felt the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm here in Heritage Quay, normally a bustling shopping area located just a stone's throw from the harbour, where cruise ships, once so common, are now a rarity. Reduced tourist numbers and an increased dependence on online payments have had a heavy impact on the island. The solution may lie in a diversified economy with a focus on innovation. That's the vision of Antigua's government, which has recently passed legislation to support the local tech sector. I've been invited to Parliament to find out more. To be honest, I've never interviewed a Prime Minister before, so wish me luck. Gaston Brown, the leader of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, has been in office for over seven years. The laws that we passed are um, in, in essence part of an overall, um, let's say, ecosystem to facilitate the digitalized transformation of our country's economy as we seek to diversify away from tourism, which has dominated um, the economic space for many decades. But again, with the heavy um, reliance on tourism, COVID would have taught us that we need to diversify soonest in order to mitigate the risk. The Prime Minister is putting his money where his mouth is with his Digital Assets Business Bill passing into law in 2020. He hopes it will encourage new digital businesses and stimulate the economy. I know that there's one prominent Bitcoin entrepreneur who lives on the island already. Could you tell me a bit about Calvin Air and, and his work? Well, Calvin Air is a good friend of the government, a personal friend of mine and uh, someone who has lived here for many years. And I know one of the things Calvin was involved with was Canada Place, which opened in 2019, I think. 
Could you tell me a bit more about Canada Place and what you think it means for young people to see a building that's so impressive like that? Well, it's iconic and I'm quite sure that um, it will inspire higher levels of achievement among um, our youth. Canada Place is the environmentally friendly $40 million investment into the Antiguan economy built by tech entrepreneur Calvin Eyre to house his own offices and those of other new companies. His focus on Bitcoin businesses through his support of Bitcoin SV is just the kind of innovation the Prime Minister wants to see. It will help us to attract new investments, create new products for exportation, increasing our earning um, capacity and at the same time creating opportunities, um, especially career opportunities um, for people. Uh, so again, you know, we welcome um, that BSV platform and we hope to utilize it um, for the benefit of the government people of Antigua and Barbuda. This is a subject that Paul Rajgod, Managing Director of Air Ventures, knows a lot about. I met up with him in his local neighbourhood of Jolly Harbour, another area earmarked for investment by Calvin Air. So what is the government of Antigua's attitude towards digital currency businesses? Well, I think it's changed. Uh, Antigua's often been on the leading edge of creating legislation to regulate new industries, and I think blockchain is no different. They've created a framework here that companies uh, can take advantage of to benefit enterprises and government bodies that are using blockchain. And of course, BSV uh, being the only infinitely scaling enterprise public blockchain is best positioned to help companies and government bodies. And do you think like the investment into Antigua is good for the local people? Or? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it goes without saying. When companies set up shop here, uh, such, as, such as we have, it ripples throughout the whole economy. National economic benefits aside, Bitcoin SV could revolutionise payments on the island for the many young Antiguans who don't have a bank account, but do have a smartphone. Have you ever had to send money abroad and had any issues with that? Um, well, I never had to send money abroad, but one time I was working for a company overseas that needed to send me money here, and they wired it to a local company here, and interestingly enough, when I went to collect the money, they told me they didn't have any money and told me to come back tomorrow, which was kind of absurd in my view. So, yeah, that happened. And is there anything you can think of that might help with situations like that here? Yeah, I actually think Bitcoin would probably be a good solution to that. However, it is a bit slow and the transaction fees are kind of high. He's talking about BTC, not the original Bitcoin. It really is slow and expensive to use. I couldn't resist showing him just how quick and cheap transactions are on the BSB network. See, have you got that on your phone? Yep. And this one actually shows up, like yeah. immediately. I know, it's good. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Locals might not be riding off into the sunset with their Bitcoin wallets anytime soon, but it's clear that Bitcoin SV could have a really positive impact here. But sitting here right now, I'm reminded that some of the best things in life are free, just like this Caribbean evening here. Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, 
blockchain, stablecoins, metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Bitcoin 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain.